the most controversial subject in the health community summed up in one word. Oxalates. Oxalate. Oxalates. Oxalates. Talking about this can get people into Braveheart mode. So what are oxalates? Oxalates are naturally occurring compounds found in many plants and plant-based foods. They belong to a class of compounds known as oxalic acid. Oxalic acid is a strong organic acid that can bind with minerals, forming crystals or salts known as oxalates. Some plants use oxalates as a defense mechanism against herbivores. Calcium oxalate crystals can be sharp and irritating, causing discomfort to herbivores that try to consume the plant. In this way, oxalate acts as a deterrent to grazing animals. And this is one of the key points of why people advise to stay away from them. They can also contribute to the formation of kidney stones in individuals who are susceptible. This is because oxalates can combine with calcium in the kidneys to form crystals, which eventually become kidney stones. People with a history of kidney stones or certain medical conditions may be advised to limit their intake of high oxalate foods. Some common foods high in oxalates include spinach, beets, nuts, rhubarb, and certain types of berries. Oxalates are seen as anti-nutrients. They can bind to calcium and to lesser extent other minerals in the stomach or intestines. This binding can reduce absorption of these minerals, inhibiting their ability to be used. In 2003, a New Zealand study showed that only 23% of calcium in spinach was available for absorption. And a Harvard article only showed 5%. In defense of spinach, they do say may not be the best source for calcium because of the oxalates, but should not be used to discount other nutrients found in spinach that are not affected by oxalates. And that's where the line is drawn. Are oxalates an evil that we must keep away from them? It all depends on who you listen to. You have medical professionals on both sides of the line. You have Dr. Paul Saladino and Sally Norton that says keep away from oxalates. Oxalates are not fallacy, guys. They are used as a plant defense chemical that plants use to protect themselves from fungi, from organisms like insects, potentially also from humans, and to protect their seeds in the animal digestive tract. And they're harmful for us. And a lot of people get significantly better when they cut out oxalates or go very low oxalate in their diet. You have Dr. Gundry and Dr. Siwas that both say it's not a big deal, but they do admit if your body's screwed up, oxalates can be an issue. But based on my research, oxalates are not the nutrition supervillain that people in the health community are claiming. Yes, oxalates can cause issues in a very small number of people, so certain people should avoid them. Then you have Dr. Ken Berry that says this. The ability to tolerate oxalate ingestion, like most things in human physiology, follows a normal distribution curve. Some people are not very affected by even a high oxalate diet. Some people are exquisitely sensitive to even a low amount of daily oxalate ingestion. You have to figure out which one of these people you are, and you do that through trial and error. So for those few people, oxalates will have a big impact, as Dr. Ken Berry just explained. So what are the possible symptoms? They can range from asthma to allergies, eczema, ADHD, autoimmune thyroid or other autoimmunity, chronic fatigue syndrome, cyst fibrosis, fromyalgia, hyperthyroid, IBD, which is inflammatory bowel disease, kidney stones, low muscle tone, migraines, and headaches. Okay, now, if you stop and take a look at this list, there are quite a few symptoms that are a bit broad that oxalates may not be the sole cause. There are more than one causes for ADHD, migraines, and allergies. Oxalates do not have monopoly on these things. So please keep that in mind. As Dr. Sideways puts it, But to assign the blame for every silly little symptom that you're feeling because of something that is vitally necessary in the human body called oxalates that are produced internally but are also consumed in certain amount certain of our foods is to assign blame and causality in the wrong direction and i know i'm going to get this barrage of people that i know that there may be an association but usually it's an assumption 
It certainly isn't causal. People are making an association by assumption. Now, before you go all Braveheart on me pointing this out, I'm not saying oxalates are harmless. I'm just saying that everything wrong with your body is caused by oxalates. Everyone's biology is a tad bit different, and you need to do a little bit of trial and error to figure out if oxalates are harming you. Thus, some health professionals suggest to have a low oxalate diet to see if your symptoms improve. You may want to get rid of high oxalate foods such as leafy greens that include spinach, Swiss chard, beet greens, collard greens, kale, nuts and seeds which include almonds, cashews, peanuts, sesame seeds, chia seeds, vegetables that include rhubarb, okra, and beets, and fruits, berries, all berries, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, kiwi, concord grapes, and then in the grains category, you got whole wheat and bran flakes. In legumes, you got soy products such as like tofu, soy milk, and then black beans, and then some other foods. You're gonna hate me for saying this, but chocolate, tea, but focus on black tea and green tea, and then sweet potatoes. And believe it or not, turmeric. It's the one with the highest amount of oxalates, which is around 1,900 milligrams per 100 grams. And remember, that's per 100 grams. No one's gonna have that much each day, but you should at least be aware of this. And focus on foods with low oxalates. For the vegetables, look into broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, cucumber, zucchini, bell peppers. For fruits, look into apples and pears, grapes, melons, any types of melons like watermelons, peaches, and mangoes. For, for dairy, look into milk, cheese, and yogurt. Grains, look into rice, oats, and quinoa. Beverages, water. You can't go wrong with water. Fruit juices, without added oxalate-rich fruits, but you gotta watch out for the added sugar. And actually, just saying this, maybe just forget about the fruit juices. You got herbal teas, so the herbal teas without black or green tea. Fats and oils, like olive oil and butter. Seeds, Surprisingly, you get away with pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds. Proteins, look into eggs, fish, ground beef, chicken, turkey, and of course, organ meats such as liver and heart. Sally Norton, who is one of the major voices about oxalate, states that eating a high oxalate food like potatoes is not going to damage your body, but consistently eating it is the issue. And with today's standard American diet, that's a challenge. I want to stop right here and point out something. In today's age where clicks equals money, people tend to use scientific papers and focus just on the headline. You may have watched other videos about how a patient or a study showing drinking a green smoothie will cause kidney failure. And here are the two studies that show that. They use the term nephrophy, which means kidney failure. What the videos fail to tell you is that the juicing study is based on one person, a 65-year-old lady. The other study with a similar title is an analysis of 65 patients who experienced kidney failure, and all of them had calcium oxalates in their kidneys. But these patients were already experiencing chronic kidney disease. So these are not true population representation. But people will not go into the details. They will just take the headline and make a blanket statement because it will resonate with their audience and the video will get more views. These sample sizes are also too small to make an overarching statement. By my opinion, I've seen enough research in cases where, like Dr. Ken Berry said, that a few are going to have a significant reaction to an oxalate-heavy diet. And as for the others, we should at least be aware. Realize we need to rotate our foods and our diet. Back to the video now. What was that all about? Okay, anyways, let's just get back to the video. Like I was saying, before you can really figure out if oxalates are part of the problem, when switching to a low oxalate diet, you may witness oxalate dumping. Oxalate dumping is a term used when people change their diet to eat less oxalates. Some believe that when you start eating less oxalates, your body might release or dump stored oxalates, causing a temporary increase in oxalates in your urine. And you will experience various aches and pains in your body. How long does it take to dump oxalates? It's actually a very unclear answer. It can range anywhere from a few days or to a few weeks. Some, unfortunately, 
have experienced it for years. Studying oxalates and how it affects the body is still new. It was talked about until the 1940s and onward the medical community focused on other health issues which at that time was a war in fat, which we all know now was misguided. But there are people out there who are affected by oxalates and it's a moving target. I've seen cases where a urine test shows no oxalates, but another doctor finds oxalates in their eyes. This makes the process a bit complicated because there's not one test that catches everything. So for those who need support, I have hope for you. I found a wonderful Facebook group called Trying Low Oxalates. The group is free and supportive, and it may be a great resource to figure out if oxalates are affecting you. And lastly, visit our website, One Earth Health. We have free food guides and offer a variety of high quality New Zealand beef organ supplements. And lastly, there's a pop-up page on our website that offers a 15% discount, and you'll be added to our email list where you'll get monthly newsletters talking about various health-related subject matters.